tell us about your, your, your upbringing, because obviously, again, like you said, we, we want to get to know each individual little nook and cranny, because even watching Love Island, we never quite got to know the entire Keenan brand, did we? Yeah, well, obviously, I was only on, on the show for seven days, mm. um, you only got to see what, what they edited in, so... Mm. My upbringing was a very basic one. I grew up on a council estate in Skem, if anyone knows where that is. Yeah. Um, so I'm just quite a normal kid from a normal background. Um, I actually started playing football first. Uh, I wasn't very good. Um, well, so what, what, who did you play for then? Was it just your, your local? Just the local team. Yeah. Um, and then I went to rugby union because my dad used to play rugby union for Oral when they were quite big yeah. at the time. Um, was that the, the end of the 90s? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. obviously I used to, he used to take me to all home away with him mm. um, and I used to love it. I used to love watching. They used to play Central Park as yeah, well, they did. Again, didn't they? Yeah. So they, they didn't get great crowds, but like I say, no. was, it was like saying in the battle against obviously playing everybody at League Up, they did all right back, back in the day, didn't but they? They were pretty famous at the time, mm. uh, Oral rugby union. So my dad obviously played for them. He was a very good kicker, mm. which is probably... Sorry, Dad, but that's probably what I got. <laughs> that's what I got him so far, to be honest with you. He was a very good goal kicker. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I used to just love watching him, and he took me down to Oral. Mm. But the thing with rugby union at that time, kids could only... I think it's still the same now, maybe. They could, Possibly. It was tag, so you yeah. had tag belts. Yeah. Um, and, and I was a bit <laughs> rougher than that, shall we yeah. say. So my dad was like, right, we'll take him to the league. Mm. So I hopped over to Oral St. James's Rugby League, mm. um, and I loved it. I loved the, the competition, the physical aspect of it. Um, and I ended up just staying there until about, I was about 10 or 11. Mm. And then I made the switch to the dark side and went to a team called St. Pat's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is in Wigan. I'm going to say, it's heck of a system, isn't it? Because even though obviously, you know, now you're, you're, you're in obviously the, the league club, like I said, the Wigan amateur system, th there's nothing like it, is there? I mean, there's no. so many clubs, there's so many teams that have produced unbelievably good Play. players and St. Pat's is, is probably the best around. Mate, if you look in any rugby league team uh, across across the country, there's Wiganers in it. Mm. Like, everyone and they're all, they're always, they produce good rugby players for yeah. some, some mad reason. I don't really know why but any team you go to there's always a Wiganer. Uh, mm. So obviously, me being from Scam, I was obviously Scouts background. I was kind of the only kid from there yeah. who, who played rugby. But I loved it, mate. I, obviously, I just, I just took to the sport so well. Uh, and then when it went to Wigan St. Pat's, it was it was just like I just love being there. I love being with the lads. Who so were some of the guys you grew up with, like at uh, uh, Pat's? Because like you say, you, you could reel off names and names and names, couldn't you? Well, like, famous I, players. I had people like Sam Powell's my coach. Mm. Um, As your coach, I mean, Sam Powell's my coach. Wow. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, his brother Ryan Powell, who still coaches now. Mm. Um, I had people like Connor Farrell. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, him, but Connor, yeah, team, yeah. He, uh, he part of the famous Farrell family. Yeah, so he was our he was our coach. We mm. we won a national final of Pat's. Uh, we beat Huns up with Mikuledski in it. Yeah. Uh, Cam Smith, people like that who wow. hadn't been beaten or challenged so in good, years. Good, do you know what I mean? They were all side, like, yeah, yeah. they were all fully grown men. And when we played, it was like the underdogs, and we yeah. won. Yeah. It was madness. Uh, so moments like that I cherish forever. Yeah, I'm gonna say because that, that's what amateur rugby is all about, isn't it? Because like you said, there's no lights, there's no no cameras on you, nothing like that. No. It's just man on man, and, and like you say, you, you hear what's coming from the other side, but it's just yeah. a case. You know what? I just want to come beat these. Well, off you go. As kids, you don't. You don't really come onto the park and look at the opposition and think, oh no, that's such a body. You just think, yeah. I'm with my mates, I'm going to give it the best I go. I used to look at what are the size of these guys. Because I, 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 I was always, always quite a big lad, I okay. always used to get played in the, in the age range. Oh, did you? So it was always a case of like, you know, the, the lads I was playing were like two and three years older than yeah. me, like probably a few inches Massive. taller. But every time I played like in my age range, I was absolutely beating the daylights out of See, I never, I never had that challenge because I was always. Not smaller than everyone else, but I was just average height. Right. So I played hooker, played in the middle. All oh, right. Which probably done me good in the long run because yeah. it probably toughened me up a lot. Um, and I love playing in the middle. I love I love the tough side of the sport. So yeah, I had um, a great spell at parts. So when I left when I was sixteen, to obviously I went to witness. Mm. Which, that was very sad. Is that where you went in, into the back line then? Is yeah. That, is that where it all kind of changed over? Because you hear stories like this. I mean, James Roby used to be an unbelievable number seven. Yeah. And yet he ends up being like the greatest number nine that's ever lived. And you know, you, you, you've had so many. Um, I was speaking to Tom Briscoe down yeah, yeah. stairs a couple of days ago. He actually debuted for Hull at seventeen at centre. It's and mad, it's isn't like it? he's never played centre since. You know what I mean? No, he had no. An amazing career. In the juniors playing at centre yeah. he's made a career as a winger I think I think playing different positions when you're a kid does help you in the long run because mm. when you get to a professional standard you know, you kind of know what you want from other positions if that makes sense so I, I played nine at Witness I got picked up as a nine mm. and I had one of me one of my good friends Danny Walker was there at the same yeah. time and Danny's obviously 
a very good talent and he was much better a hooker than I was at the time so they kind of just put me into the centre as if like they needed someone to play centre right <laughs> and I, just so happened, to it, yeah. I just so happened to be good <laughs> at, playing, <laughs> at playing that position so it yeah. just went from there really I'm going to say it would be good to see what we did if we put your prop forward or over here oh mate I've played i played every position you, on the bar it, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I obviously played for witness mm. and I kind of just to be fair it's, it went like that all the way yeah. up until I made my debut in 2018 for the mm. first team and six minutes in I broke my leg oh. yeah double double leg break so oh. so it kind of went like that and I was like oh no and it yeah. was like yeah. awful me nan was there watching it was horrendous yeah. stretch it off after six minutes